What's up YouTube, welcome back to another video. Today I have a hard SQL interview problem for you. This one's part of Stratascratch's new Advanced SQL 25, which is a list of hard problems only. You wanted hard questions, so getting into them. This one still shouldn't be a problem for us because there's a good way to break it down. I'll show you, let's get into it. So this one's called Rank Variance Per Country. It's company tagged for Meta and it's actually using Facebook data. Our task is to find out which countries have risen in the rankings based on the number of comments between December 2019 versus January 2020. And as a hint, to avoid gaps between ranks when ranking countries, we should use a specific function. So we have two tables, one called FB comments count and one called FB active users. One contains user IDs, date of when a comment was created and then the number of comments created on that day seems to be largely one, there's two in there too, so it can be different from one, can be multiple comments. And the FB active users table has that same user ID, a name for the user status or whether the account is open or closed, I assume, and the country of where they signed up for Facebook. Right, let's get back to our task. The task is to find out which countries, so it can be multiple, which countries have risen in the rankings based on the number of comments between December 2019 versus 2020, January 2020. So you can imagine there's like an imaginary ranking of countries who left the most comments from one to the number of countries. And we want to find out which one have improved in rankings from December 2019 to January 2020. Improving in the rankings means they have a, high, a higher rating now, a higher rank which is actually a lower number. So if you go from rank three to rank one, you improved your ranking, even though the number is now lower. So we'll have to take care of that. Yeah, this one's marked as hard. We have to combine a few things on Stratastretch now. It actually gives you an explanation of why a problem is hard, which is very cool. But yeah, we have these two tables to work with. I wanted to draw up how I think about the problem and how I would approach it. Let me know if this is useful. So we have these two tables, one about comments and one about user information. So yeah, we can just call these users here. And yeah, these are the two input tables. I'll draw some box boxes to represent them. I have some data in there. We don't really care what it is specifically, but in terms of combining them, I talked about user ID being both of them. So that is our key to combining things. I'm gonna combine these using user IDs. And then I said, let's imagine there's a ranking for each country in terms of how many comments they had. The highest rank or the lowest number would be for the country that had the most comments in a time frame. So we want to combine this and then pretty much com combine this to two new tables, which are based on different times. We'll have one for December 19, and we'll have another table for January 20. And yeah, let's say these are two boxes again, two new tables, and they would have each country and the ranking based on the number of comments they had in that month. So really what we care about is having the country name and a ranking in there. I'll just draw that up real quick to illustrate it. Country and then a rank for December 19. And then we'd have the same thing for the other table. So they would have the same format. Let's see if I can, ah, that looks a bit scuffed, but you get the point. So to have the same setup here, country and rank. And yeah, I'll give some example data. US one, Mexico two, uh, Netherlands three, and so on. And then they would have a different ranking, maybe Netherlands is one and so on. MX still to US now three. And yeah, in the end, we want to combine this as the entire point of setting this up to have a sort of central overview of the country. 
then the rank from this table from December 19. And then another rank for January 2020. And the cool thing is if we have that set up, let's go with that Netherlands example. Netherlands went from rank three to rank one. So they have a higher rank in 2020 compared to 2019. And these are pretty much the countries we want to output. So the question again said, which countries have risen in rankings? Netherlands has risen in rate in rankings because they now have a lower rank went from three to one. So that would be part of our output. So we can just use the setup. If we end up with this table, we can compare these two columns. If this one, the January one is lower than the December one, it means they have improved their ranking and want to make them part of the output. For Mexico, that wouldn't be the case. They have the same ranking, we wouldn't output them. For US, that also wouldn't be the case because they have not improved the ranking, actually got worse and they went from one to three. And that's why they wouldn't be part of the output. Final output would just be Netherlands in this case. Oopsie. Yeah, so that is my approach. I think if you think about it that way, it makes it very easy. You just have to be able to divide and conquer well and structure your code. And I'll show you how to do it. Uh, from scratch now. So I like to start out with a select star from statement just as a like baseline template, then think about what I actually want to select. But I want to really take care of combining the information, structuring it. So I want to combine the two tables, FB comments count and FB, I think it's called active users. Yeah. I will combine them just using a regular join because yeah, I want to make sure I'm able to filter by countries or group by country in this case and yeah, actually make sure these users have that country assigned to them. It doesn't make sense to do any other kind of join like a left join here because I want the country for every user anyways. So I'm going to join them using user ID is using just like a shorter form of writing FB comments count dot user ID equals FB active users dot user ID. So I'll use that. And that should just combine the two tables. I mentioned I want to have the country and the ranking in the two different time frames later on. So I'll think about how to get the ranking and then do the date filtering. So for the ranking, I basically want to base it on the sum of the number of comments. I have to take the, the sum here because there could be multiple comments on a given date. So I can just count the amount of rows. I actually have to sum up the comments because it could be two or more comments on, on a day. It's not just one always. So that would get me the amount of comments per country if I also group by country. So check in here, run this, and it actually does what I want it to. But I don't want to get the number of comments, I actually want to get the ranking. And the question says we should avoid gaps between ranks and ranking countries. So we'll have to use a specific ranking function, which is dense rank, dense rank. It's called dense because it doesn't create gaps. It's compressed, it's dense. So if you had a tie in the ranking, you would continue the ranking with the next number and don't leave a gap depending on how many countries were tied in this case. So if you had a tie for position one, for rank one, if you had two tied at one, you would go from one, one to rank two instead of rank three. And regular ranking functions would go to rank three because you had two countries at rank one. We, we don't want that to be the case. So we'll use this de dense rank function. And ranking functions are window functions. So we'll have to use the window function syntax, which is the over keyword. And then in parentheses, partition by order by 
can specify whether you want to base this window, which you use to create the rank, if you want to base it on a specific field, if you only want to create the rank within a specific subset of the table. We don't want that, we want to look at the entire table, but we do want the order to be based on the sum of comments. So I'll just copy that. We can actually use an aggregate function like sum in our window function um, syntax here, which reduces the code we have to write. Otherwise we would have to maybe create a, a subquery or temporary table CTE to do this, but we're actually able to do it all in one go. So again, the rank should just be based on the sum of comments per country. We have the group by in, in here, which makes sure the sum is taken by each country. And yeah, what we'll be left with is just the country as well as the rank. We say order by the sum of comments, but we don't specify whether it's ascending or descending. So I'll do that here. Descending means highest number of comments will be on top. We'll have rank one. So let's try whether that works. We have USA rank one, Mali rank two, China also rank two. And then I talked about not leaving gaps. So it goes to rank three here instead of rank four. Let's maybe try the normal rank window function to see the difference. So here we go from one to two, two again, two, and then to four, because yeah, this one leaves gaps and sees there were two at rank two. So we're gonna compensate for that by skipping a rank. And yeah, same happens at five here, seven. But yeah, it changed, it changed it back to dense rank. And I think we got pretty far. We could double check whether it's correct by just having the sum number of comments in here too. But yeah, I don't want to stop at every step of the way. Just to confirm here, we have the highest amount of comments, second highest and so on. Yeah, we only care about the ranking anyways. So I'll leave that. And now basically we got to creating a ranking, but we don't have that for December 19 and January 2020. So that's what I'll do next. And then we'll just combine the two tables again and filter to our final output and we should be done. So I'm working with CTEs here to make it very organized. So I'll say I want to create a ranking for December 19. So let's call it with ranking December 19. Then spin up some parentheses, do some formatting. And that should be the December 19 version. And then I'll do the same for Gen 20. And then I'll write a final query to combine everything and do the filtering. Yeah, so let's outline that here too. Nice. Yeah, so what's, what's really just needed, you probably know this in terms of just filtering that to a specific time, just to add a where filter in here at the right step. So I like to in my head repeat the order of operations in SQL, which is select from where group by order by having basically select from where group by is what you'll mostly have select from then we'd add the where and then it's group by. So I'll add the where in here, select from where our date column is created at, and that should be, let's make it easy here. Just hard coded should be between, well, the beginning of December 2019 up until the end. And if you have worked with SQL for a while, you'll just know how many days each month has. I'm sort of using like a little trick on my knuckles to see whether it's 30 or 31 days. Not sure if you know that one, but it makes it really easy. So December is 31 days. So we'll filter to that and that should do the trick for December 19. And then I can just copy paste that code and filter this one to January of 2020, which also has 31 days. So I think we can do this 2020 or one 31. 
Yeah, and the between keyword is inclusive, so it includes both the start and end date uh, as part of the range. And just like that, we set up these two temporary tables as CTEs. And then these are the ones we can work with and refer to in our main query. And our main query will just, yeah, let's just join them. Select star from ranking December 19, join ranking January 2020. Using country this time, so country is actually the primary key here now, which is used to join things. And I'll run that, but we'll run into a little problem. Oh yeah, so I actually didn't have the correct syntax for the CTE. Need to add the as keyword and then supply the subquery. And then if I run that query that combines the two, I get two columns named dense rank, which makes it hard to differentiate between them. So I'll add a name for them. This would be Decem 19 rank. And that other would be the other one would be Gen 20 rank. Doesn't matter too much here, the exact name is, but I wanted to spell it out because otherwise the name of the columns would be dense rank. And that is the name for the function. So we would maybe confuse SQL, the interpreter here, and ourselves by doing that. So in terms of filtering the final output, we need to use these ranks, which is why I gave them a specific name. We want to just have the country in the output. Again, we want to select countries that have risen in the rankings. So we want the Gen 20 rank to be lower than the December 19 rank, because if they have a lower rank, that means they have improved in the rankings. Yeah, so let's run that. The only country is Mali and that is our final output. So just to get everyone caught up here, we're checking whether their new rank is lower than their, their old rank, which mean they came from a rank like three and got to rank like one or two. It's a lower number, which is a better rank and means they have received more comments in January 2020 compared to December 2019. We wanted to get all countries that had an improvement. That's how we get it. It turns out it is only one country for the example data. But if we run this, check for the solution, that is accepted. That has been the entire problem. It's not too complicated. We had to sort of make sense of things and structure them well and then it became very easy, in my opinion. So if you want to go over more hard problems, make sure to follow the channel. I'll have a playlist for this entire advanced SQL 25 playlist or just list on Strata Scratch and we'll go all over all of them. And yeah, let me know if you enjoy these hard problems and the illustrations around it and I'll see you in the next video. Also, give these hard problems a try before you come to the solutions if you want to be able to see where you trip up and need to learn more things. So I'll have a link to this specific question down below and I'll also link this entire list of 25 advanced problems that are all marked as hard for you to give them a try. You might have to get a membership to access some of them, but it's well worth it for the amount of questions that are on the platform and the guides and non-coding questions too. So check it out. I'll have a link below and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.